the Miami Dolphins may need to appease cornerback Xavier Howard again ahead of the 2022 season and that could be a problem. In 2021, the Dolphins faced a mounting problem with their starting cornerback, Xavier Howard. The problems began early in the offseason when Howard stayed away from all offseason workouts. As camp opened up, Howard showed up but quickly was injured and couldn't practice. Howard's saga played out daily with questions to Brian Flores. Flores answered regularly that the Dolphins wanted Howard on the team. In the end, the Dolphins guaranteed portions of his contract and moved around enough money to make Howard the top-paid player on the roster. That placated the star corner but was it enough to keep him happy ahead of the 2022 season? There hasn't been much speculation on the topic and there have been no rumors but Howard isn't the highest-paid player on the roster this year. He is about $100,000 short of Byron Jones. He is coming off another Pro Bowl nomination and while his 2021 season was far from his 2020 season, he was still very productive and a key in the Dolphins' defense. Now, Dolphins fans are wondering if the Howard saga will continue this offseason. As the 2021 season came to an end, Howard posted a simple picture on one of his social media accounts. The image was him waving while walking off the field. Nothing else was said. Was it a prelude to this offseason or simply a goodbye to last season? Time will tell on this one but if I were a betting man, I would put my money on Howard not being happy and the Dolphins being put in a position to give him more money, a new contract, and more than likely both. The bigger problem though is some believe that Howard doesn't want to be in Miami. That he wants to play somewhere else and if that is indeed a fact, Miami needs to move on. Howard is under contract for the next three seasons. This year he will count $16.3 million against the cap. In 2023, that number drops to $15.3 million, and in 2024, his cap number is $14.1 million. In all three seasons, Howard is being paid less than Jones who will make $16.40, $16.20, and $16.1 million. If Howard stays and continues to make the Pro Bowl, this is going to be a problem and we can't deny that. Howard's numbers are not exactly team-friendly and the Dolphins will have to eat a big portion of his money if he is traded or released which won't happen. In 2022, the Dolphins would eat all but $3 million. It becomes far easier for Miami to move on in 2023 when that number increases to $11 million in savings and only $3.9 million in dead money. 2024 keeps the money in Miami hands. $12 million in savings and only $1.2 million dead. The Dolphins may have to rework his contract this year, the final year of the contract that is in Howard's favor. He will likely want more guaranteed money this year or a change to the deal that gives him more money guaranteed next year. It is unlikely that Howard would take a restructure that pushes money into next year but he would be smart to do so if he does want to stay in Miami. It might financially benefit him in the long run. For now, it's a waiting game but if last year was any indication, the Dolphins should at least be prepared for another problem with Howard this offseason. Why Tua Tungavailoa can be average and still lead this team? The Miami Dolphins want Tua Tungavailoa to lead them to a Super Bowl but he has to first get to the playoffs. He doesn't have to be great. There is no bigger raging debate than that of the name Tua Tungavailoa. Say his name on social media or even on this site, and you will incite a debate that could lead to a verbal riot. Support him and you are an idiotic homer but if you don't you're also an idiot who only sees negative. If and when Tua Tungavailoa is off the Dolphins roster, you will get the told you so fans coming out of the woodwork to laugh in your face. If he succeeds, it will be because of the other 10 guys on the roster. The reality is simple. Tua doesn't have to be great to be a winner. He only has to be good and that is being above average. The Dolphins are not built for a top-tier quarterback who can lead them on his shoulders. I know, great teams are built that way. In New England, a great defensive system made Mac Jones into a Pro Bowl quarterback despite the fact he was so far from being one. In Tampa Bay a great team all around gave Tom Brady enough to win a Super Bowl despite playing far from what he was over the years. In 2021, even Brady couldn't get the Buccaneers into the final game of the season. Tua needs help and there is no denying that. Justin Herbert can't do it alone either. The Chargers' offense is catered to what Herbert does well, throw the football. In Miami, the Dolphins need to build an offense that caters to what Tua does well. The question is what exactly that is? Tungavailoa can throw the football but he isn't elite in arm strength. He makes good decisions most of the time and is one of the more accurate young quarterback in the league. Tua needs help though. He needs a far better offensive line and he needs a running game that is more than just complementary. In Los Angeles, Herbert has a complementary running game and it works because the focus is different. 
Mike McDaniel wants to build the Dolphins into a top-running game and that will do a lot for Tunga Vailoa who will not need to push the ball downfield, if it works. If the running game is built the way McDaniel wants it to, Tunga Vailoa will be a successful NFL quarterback who can take this team to the postseason and beyond. Consider that the 49ers were close to the Super Bowl this year. Not because Jimmy Garoppolo is a great quarterback. In fact, you could say that if the 49ers had Tunga Vailoa, they may have fared better in the championship game. Tua doesn't tend to make the same mistakes over and over again and he is much more accurate than Jimmy Garoppolo. But like Jimmy Garoppolo, he needs the support around him. There is a great divide between what Miami is now and what they can be. There is also a big gap between what Tunga Vailoa is now and what he could be in the right system. Miami doesn't need a Justin Herbert or a Joe Burrow because their offense won't need that elite quarterback. The vitriol towards Tua is crazy. I'm not personally a fan of his on the field. I didn't want Miami to draft him but I'm not blinded by the fact Miami may have missed out on a player that is far better. I do see talent in Tua and I see what he is good at. I'm not sure that McDaniel is going to bring out Tua's greatness as he has claimed. I see a quarterback who needs support in many areas and the talent to lead the team so long as it is not entirely on his shoulders. That is what McDaniel is tasked with and that is where he needs to succeed if Tua is going to be better than average.